Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in Pathfinder Solutions series and I have brought forward to you a problem from the topic of uh, chapter 14 in the book, uh, um, Magnetic Force and uh, Magnetic Effects of Current. Um, but we will be trying to solve this problem in a slightly counterintuitive and I'd be using an analogy of Faraday's law. So the solution is going to be shorter than the usual solution that a student can think of in this particular scenario. So I would be trying to avoid lengthy integrations and some of you might have seen the solution of this uh, on the internet so we'll try to take a alternative route and thereby enriching our understanding of the concept okay so please do watch till the end of the video i'll be presenting you with two more practice problems on a similar scenarios of rolling objects in uh, electromagnetic induction okay so here we move ahead for the formal wording of the question so in case you have never solved this problem before uh, I would urge you to pause the video here, read the problem on your own, give it a fair try of five to 10 minutes and uh, um, do come back for the problem solution. And in case you have already solved it, I would request you to still watch it. I'm pretty sure you would try, uh, take away something very important from this particular video. Okay, so here we go. A ring of radius R made of an insulating material has mass M and carries uniform charge, this one. Initially, it rests on a frictionless horizontal table top with its plane vertical. A uniform horizontal magnetic field of induction B is pointing everywhere parallel to the axis of the ring and is established in the region to the right of the vertical plane AA prime as shown in the figure. So field is only on the right side. It's a hypothetical situation. The ring is pushed forward to acquire a velocity V0 without any rotation. So that means it's only translating velocity and the floor is frictionless. So it will continue to move till it enters the region. What should the charge on the ring be so that it starts rolling on the tabletop after completely entering the region of magnetic field? So this one, once enters completely, it should be starting to roll uh, purely on the surface. So for that to happen, what is the value of the charge that is there on the ring, which is uniformly distributed? Okay, so yeah, let's move forward. First, I'll take up the concept. There'll be a lot of things written on the board, so please do follow my lead instead of watching the entire board on your own and then we'll apply that concept in getting the short solution that i claimed of okay so here's the concept explanation of what i'm going to do as an analogy so here I have drawn a arbitrary instant of the ring entering that region so i have drawn a blue vertical line here to the right of this blue vertical line i have the field which is existing so um, at any instant you would say that at the, if the ring starts actually rolling, not pure rolling, right? Pure rolling should start once the ring completely enters the region. So at any arbitrary instant, it should develop omega. I'll prove to you why it should develop omega, right? Omega can be developed if there is a torque on, on this particular ring about its center of mass, okay? So if you take any dm element, right? Or a dl length element of charge, uh, it would definitely have a forward velocity V due to the velocity of center of mass, okay? And also by chance, if it acquires some rotation of omega about the center of mass, it would also have an R omega speed in this direction. So the net speed of this DL element would be the vector combination of V and R omega. Now I'll keep them uh, separate so that I can talk about the force uh, due to the magnetic field on this charge dq, right? Uh, the value of the force is given by dq into v into b due to this component. And you know, it's a cross product, right? V cross b would point in the downward direction like this. Whereas due to this r omega component, there would be another co component of force, which is df2 perpendicular to this r omega towards the center. My argument here would be this omega development only happens due to this df1 and but not due to df2 because it passes through the center and hence provides no torque. Okay, so let's read through whatever I said in a formal manner. As the ring moves, each dl element present in the field, dl is this small arc here, experiences a force with two components, df1 in this direction due to the v velocity and df2 due to the r omega speed okay now df1 is solely responsible for the torque that causes the change in this omega okay right the tangential component of this df1 which is the torque producer remember this df1 i can further divide it into two components one towards the center and one tangential okay that df1's tangential component i'm writing it as df1 
subscript t this should be writable as some dq into et i know it's df1 is actually written in this form so i'm considering this v into b as a uh, analogical E, uh, electric field okay right so that et is in this particular direction according to me so where it is the equivalent induced electric field okay so a physical significance of this induced electric field can also be found by sitting on this frame and using the field transformations okay so, so if some of you are not aware of the field transformations please i have made one or two videos on that already you need to uh, watch those videos links of those are in the description below or in the i button right now above okay so you can go back and uh, watch that and come back but even if you don't know anything about field transformation in this scenario you should be able to visualize this et as a, a physical quantity which is equivalent to this b into v in this particular cos theta direction okay so some value in this direction an equivalent field okay so we'll we'll go ahead with that understanding the value of the torque therefore should be integration of this tangential force multiplied by the radius r okay right oh, here comes the magic part if i write this dq as lambda into the r d theta of this particular thing right so dl right so the lambda into dl dl stays inside let me keep it inside r comes out along with this lambda i end up getting a beautiful integral called integral e t dl Okay, so if there is an induced electric field of sorts in this particular tangential direction, if I want to calculate the torque, now the torque value depends on integration of this over every part of the DL, not the entire ring, please mind you, it is only the DL part which is available in the field because inside the CT, there is a B into V into a cos of the angle. Okay, now, so what is this integration of ETDL along this path? Okay, so along this path, if I'm trying to watch right and calculate it should be nothing but the rate of change of flux because this is an ideal case to apply the faraday's law okay so as this ring keeps moving in the value of this area of the ring which is inside the field keeps changing therefore there is a rate of change of flux which i can directly calculate and associate it with this integral so instead of calculating this hardcore integration i can actually make it into an easy differentiation of the field with res uh, flux with respect to time okay so that makes the flux uh, torque calculation much simpler okay so then i'll take this dt onto the other side and assume that integration of tau dt would be an integration of lambda r d phi which comes out to be nice value of change in uh, the flux so if i want to calculate the torque over the entire period we call this left hand side as the angular impulse which is responsible for changing the angular velocity or angular momentum of the ring it would be nicely in one step related to the change in flux of this magnetic uh, field on and the ring association okay this is the concept i'll carry forward to the solving of the problem okay so let's move ahead again a lot of things on the board just follow my lead so on the left side top of your screen you have the picture given in the question which is the initial stage of the ring and on the right side there is the final stage where the ring has completely entered the field region okay so if i use the angular impulse equation about center of mass from the initial stage directly to the final stage integral tau dt about center of mass should be equal to icm of the ring multiplied by omega since initially there was no omega actually this is minus zero this is a change in angular momentum already from the previous page we realized integral tau dt is simply equivalent to lambda r delta phi i substituted from the previous page and icm is mr square into omega right so lambda is q divided by 2 pi r right and delta phi is b into pi r square right the entire magnetic field was uniform so there was no need for the integration here too so when you rearrange you end up getting a simplistic relation qb divided by 2m is the final angular velocity of this particular ring keep it aside now you can use the mechanical energy analysis also as we all know on the fbd of this diagram of the ring there are only magnetic forces and they don't do work therefore the pure translational kinetic energy in the initial stage should kind convert to the pure rolling kinetic energy in the final stage and those two kinetic energies should be equal to each other 
okay remember there is no other forces friction was not acting normal reaction and weight don't do work okay so the half mv not square of this stage should be equal to half into 2 mr square into omega square okay so this is written about icr at the bottom most point okay or you can write it as half mv square plus half icm omega square and then again use v is equal to r omega in either way you should be able to write the total energy while rolling so this first equation in which omega is there and the second equation in which omega you just substitute this for omega here and eliminate omega from 1 and 2 you end up getting the expression for the charge in this manner i know you might be thinking i claim that this is a short solution and i have explained it so much please understand once you understand this integral tau dt equal to lambda r delta phi which i took time to explain i think this is going to be a very short solution and nowhere i have actually integrated uh, during the solution okay so i hope you enjoyed the way the problem was presented to you and in case you want to have a practice of uh, electromagnetic induction induction problems there are beautiful problems in the book of pathfinder so here's the practice problem number 1 okay from the topic of emi and ac okay build up your understanding 43 and a slightly more complicated problem right but still well within the je advanced uh, situations and indian olympiads okay so this is a nice practice for your ioq in february and this is from check your understanding fourth problem so these two problems i'll come up with the solutions very shortly uh, in the pathfinder solution series okay so in case you want to check out the rest of the pathfinder solution series the link of the playlist is in the description below along with the other running parallel series in the channel which are olympiad workout series where i do solve the previous uh, different uh, national and international olympiad problems that are important for your preparation and also ats select series for je aspirant from the different institutes uh, all india test series papers select problems and also resolve series which cater to the needs of the students whose doubts generally don't get answered properly in textbooks and all the toppers that have been involved with uh, the doubts of those students which enriches our subjects equally okay so all these links are in the playlist uh, and the, those links are in the description below so please make sure you go through them uh, uh, please do like this video in case you have gained something from it liked videos are pushed by youtube algorithm to more audience and thereby helping me uh, to gain more subscribers and please do share this content with relevant telegram and whatsapp study groups that you are part of and um, ensure uh, that i get more subscriptions so and also in case you are new to this channel i would request you to watch three or four videos per day uh, especially if you are a je aspirant and uh, within few days you will start liking my channel and the content and the uniqueness with which it is pre presented and um, i am i'm pretty sure you would definitely subscribe to my channel okay so thanks for staying this long with me and see you in the next video